Hello everyone. Um, so we have been demonstrating how to use current probes in the time domain in the previous episodes. But obviously we are dealing with EMC and EMI and most of the cases that are of current probes are actually uh, used for frequency domain analysis. Okay, So in this episode we're going to demonstrate how to use a current probe to measure conducting emission noise. Okay, As you can see this is a typical CISPR 25 uh, uh, benchtop setup. You can of course use the same setup for military avionics uh, test as well. It's uh, very similar. Okay, As you can see we have the uh, DC lesions right, currently connected to the positive and negative uh, um, wire of the device on the test. It's worth mentioning that for the DC lesions, right, in this case you must terminate the lesions with a 50 ohm terminating resistors. That is important. If you don't terminate it, then your results would be different. Okay, and you need to check with the standards because different uh, EMC test standards, they will require different lengths of cables, okay? So most of the time, for example, if you check the JOR, uh, standards they will give you a, a, a given length and often for conducted emission by using current probe methods the cable length is often quite long uh, if I can remember um, not this short okay um, but uh, I just wanted to clarify for this demo we just use this length of wire right this is not um, based on any particular standards, just for demonstration purposes. Okay, and often you need to check uh, your uh, dedicated test standards because they will give you the distance between the DUT and your current probe. Right, so often this could be twenty-five centimeters or seventy-five centimeters. Again, depends on your um, specific test standards. Okay, so the um, DUT, in this case a PCB, is, is placed above the test ground plane uh, with some insulation support and this is our uh, current probe and in this case we're using TPCP2500 okay, for this demonstration and as you can see here for this test we're actually using again the uh, tech box uh, receiver Okay, which will already uh, showcase the uh, capability of this unit, right? So we're going to use the uh, um, tech boss receiver for this uh, demonstration. So we open the software, as you can see, we selected the test methods as CISPR25 current me methods. Okay, well, so when we loaded the um, standards into the software, you can see on the y axis it changes to dB microamps automatically. That means you know the standard often gives the limit in terms of current. Okay, and as we explained, if you're measuring using this RF current probe, it gives you the voltage reading first. Only when you know the transfer impedance of the RF current probes, you can then calculate the current in dB microamps. So you can of course do it manually, but you know with softwares software is a lot easier to do right okay so in this case you can see we already loaded the uh, uh, the current pro profile so you go to here you can actually load the uh, uh, compensation files so or current probes so in this case let's try tpcp to 500 because that's the probe we're using so by clicking this box you actually load the current transfer impedance, right? So I can show you because, for example, one select, okay, we go to this one and we're going to perform a test. So this would basically gives us the current value uh, reading, right? So this shows you the dB micro volts, sorry, dB micro amps in this result because we haven't powered up the unit. So currently this is pretty flat. Now, just to compare, if I didn't click this box, that means we just read the raw data from this current probe, you will see the raw data would be like this. So if you pay attention to this bit of the, uh, the curve, okay, so this is with the current probe transfer impedance loaded. Now I'm going to perform the same test again just to show you the difference. You see, this is more flat because it does not take the current transfer impedance into consideration if you don't click the box. Okay, so obviously with the software, it is a lot easier uh, for us to uh, to do the uh, test. So now I'm going to. Uh, 
power up the unit and uh, perform the test. As you can see, this is the uh, plot we just plotted by having the transfer impedance uh, lookup table in the software. So the software just gives us the value in terms of dB microamps automatically. So yeah, and this result basically shows you the common mode current by uh, having the measurement in this manner. Okay, another very useful application of an RF current probe is you measure the common mode current on the cable and then you can predict the far field radiated emission results, right? This method is particularly useful if you are dealing with power electronics application, okay? And it's also useful in terms of the frequency range between 30 megahertz to about 300 megahertz, okay? If you want to know more about this subject, we have another video which is called Engineering's, Engineer's Guide to Radiating Emission Test, which is very popular on YouTube, so you can watch, right? I have uh, put the link in this uh, video as well, okay? Anyway, so you can see, again, we have the same setup, right? But in today's setup, right, we want to answer you this question. So, because often, engineers ask us questions saying, look, I mean, we don't have the, you know, the fancy algorithm or software you have, but we do have an RF current probe, and we also have a spectral analyzer. Please just tell us which limit value is a good value for us to determine whether we would pass or fail the radiating emission test, okay? So in order to answer that question, right, let's have a look at this results, okay? So you can see here, this is the uh, uh, algorithm we used to predict the far field, okay? As you can see, right, there are two curves. One is showing in green and one is showing in gray. And the green is the predicted far field results against the limit line showing there, right? So the limit line currently is class B limits, okay? And, uh, and the green line is actually the raw data, okay? So that's really the data in terms of, you know, you measure it, and then that's how the spectral analyzer uh, reading looks like, okay? Gray curve, okay, is the raw data read by the spectral analyzer. So that must be in dB microvolts then. So if that's the case, right, so this is dB microvolts showing in the raw data, and then we know, roughly speaking, this TPCP2750 has 20 dB ohm as a transfer impedance. So if we use this value, minus 20, that means the dB microamps, in this case, for example, if we look at the current limit, 40 in this case, and this is hitting 40, and if I minus 20, that gives me about 20 dB microamps. But 20 dB microamps means we'll fail this class B limit and failing by 15 dB. In order to ensure a good pass, my measured, mic uh, my measured uh, RF current should really be about 5 dB microamps, isn't it? Giving 5 dB microamps, I may pass. So is that the case then? So rather than loading this uh, uh, algorithm, which predicts the E-field, I'm just going to load my current uh, probe uh, transfer impedance. So you can see now I just loaded the current probe transfer impedance. I'm, gonna, I'm now going to do another scan. This will give me the results in both the raw data term and also the dB microamps reading, which is the current reading. And let's see the value. I just perform a, a sweep. As you can see here, the gray curve is the raw data that's in dB microvolts, whereas the green is the uh, current value in dB microamps. So if you look at all these values, they are about 20 dB microamps and has about 20 dB offset uh, with the raw data, indicating it's a 20 dB ohm flat curve in this frequency range. And we know that from the previous results, this bit of the uh, results still failing the class B limits by about 15 dB. So really, if you minus 15 dB, you would really want your 
RF current on the cable to be below 5 dB microamps, or at least below 10 dB microamps, to give you a good confidence in terms of passing class B limit. Okay, so I guess that answers your question, which is, you know, if we don't have this algorithm and we'll just use an RF current probe uh, measuring the RF current on the cable, what level should we aim to give a good pass confidence level? Okay.